Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is the week of July 4th, 2022. And this week we have four stories. The first one is a Zephyr drone has been flying for the last 17 days. And guess what? It is still flying. We'll talk about a Mavic 3 that was shut down. This is things that unfortunately we seem to be reporting on almost every week now. We'll talk about the NAAA, which is an organization for uh, agricultural operation that is cautioning UAS operators near, well, low flying aircraft. And then we'll talk about Samsung coming up with what they call the airborne surveillance camera. So let's get to it. The first story this week is the Zephyr drone that has been flying for the last 17 days and it is still up in the air. Uh, that's not a small unmanned aircraft, it is actually fairly large. Uh, this is powered by Airbus, it's a solar powered UAV. And uh, the last time that they tried something like this, they actually stood up in the air for 28 days. Yes, that's right, 28 days. Uh, this is, uh, they started in Arizona, uh, they were over the Sofa Wilderness and then the Yuma Test Range, and then they actually went all the way to Belize. So they're still flying. We'll keep you posted hopefully next week, possibly even the following week when they're done doing this. I think this is really interesting, uh, testing this type of technology, obviously helping with, um, with staying, staying up in the air longer, which seems to be something that a lot of operators are looking for. When we, when we do Pixel Drone Show with Haya and we talk to uh, UAS operators operating in all different sorts of, uh, of environments, the one thing that they mention a lot is wanting to fly longer. So this could be one of the solutions here. The next story is not such a good one. Uh, this is in North Carolina. Uh, somebody got their Mavic 3 shot down from the air. Uh, this was during a family gathering. Uh, they were taking pictures of the sunset and then they heard four shots and then the aircraft fell out of the sky. Uh, the operator reported the incident to local law enforcement and to the FAA. Now the FAA issued a statement and I do want to mention this. We, we, we talk about these quite a bit. Uh, it is a federal offense to shoot a drone down. Now there's not a whole lot that the FAA can actually do about this, but uh, the the FBI actually is the party that needs to get involved with this. So um, we need to do better as drone operators to uh, report these kind of incidents to everyone and to push as hard as possible. Uh, Vic has been, Vic Moss, you're familiar with him, has been very involved with this at the uh, drone service provider Alliance. They've been keeping track of these events. And uh, they also, Vic last week was, uh, there was a, um, uh, AAAC meeting, what used to be the DAG, the Drone Advisory Committee, and Vic brought up the uh, the data that they've been collecting for over a year now, and hopefully it can get some traction as to uh, these type of events so they stop happening. Uh, we've been very vocal to the FA that uh, the event of remote ID is going to be creating more issues like this, and uh, hopefully we're wrong, but uh, this is not going to end well at one point, either by a uh, drone pilot getting shot or the drone pilot defending themselves. Uh, in this uh, scenario, so we need to keep an eye on this. The next thing is Samsung is coming up with a what they call an Overwatch drone. Uh, this was uh, created in order to help people in dark areas uh, that are traveling or going from point A to point B, especially in cities that are poorly lit or in areas where there is high crime rate. Uh, the drone is equipped with a 360 camera and uh, it can actually summon po police if it detects that there is a crime being committed and then even track the suspect. So I thought this is an interesting kind of twist. Uh, I'm not sure how they're going to get around the regulation because obviously uh, this needs to have an operator, needs to be kept within line of sight. And because they're flying at night, and this would not be a recreational flight. And in this case, they would probably need to have a part 107 certificate. So there's a lot going on here. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if this actually comes out to be something that people actually purchase. Uh, but um, yeah, kind of interesting story here. Last story is the NAAA. This is the National Agricultural Association, Aviation Association, and they released a flyer cautioning UAS operators for uh, the upcoming agricultural operations, especially during the summer when there's a lot of crops out there. Uh, the flyer has some issues. Uh, obviously, yes, it is extremely important for UAS operators to uh, make sure that they stay away from low flying aircraft, such as uh, all the agricultural aircraft flying low. Uh, they also need to make sure they follow the rules, make sure that they get airspace approval if airspace approval is needed. And then if you're operating in an area where there is agricultural flights, man aircraft, um, then you need to make sure that you talk to them to see where they're going to be and, and making sure there is no collision. Now, the flyer also mentioned 
mentions that UAS operators should equip their aircraft with ADSB out. Now, we need to make clear that ADSB out cannot be used for UAS. The FAA specifically forbid uh, the use of ADSB out in order to keep the system uncongested for uh, manned aircraft. ADSB was not designed to be a low altitude uh, system. And it also wasn't designed to capture a lot of targets in a small area, which if you were to do this with the millions of drones that are flying out there, uh, you could have some serious issues. So the FAA specifically says in part 89, 14 CFR part 89, that you should not uh, be equipping your aircraft with ADSB out. So please, 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 we reached out to the NAAA to let them know that uh, they should be removing this from the flyer. Uh, if you go to the article down in the description, there's a place to leave a comment. Uh, it's actually not a new article. We somewhat stumbled upon this uh, information and then read through it and we're like, oh, this is actually not good. So uh, please take a moment, just go leave a comment. Just be polite, be nice. Let them know that uh, ADSB is not a solution that can be used in this case. Uh, but again, I think the message is right. What they are trying to, uh, to get across, we just need to make sure that uh, people don't get in trouble for using technology they're not supposed to. All right, this is it. That's all I have. Like, subscribe, leave your comments, and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.